content. Yeah, and and this makes a lot of sense. Like you can tell that this is something that Infamous planned for. They just knew that they want this Viper, but also that it's specifically usually going to be zero on the offlane Viper. So yeah, the Oracle, a great counter here, a great way of keeping this Monkey King alive. Obviously, building Jingu stacks is hard in the Nether Toxin, but uh, Monkey King just has to avoid the hero. So he's going to be the one not wanting to like really jump in and start these fights. Um, excited to see what Black and Yellow come up with here. They grab the Earth Spirit. Really good at finding the Oracle on the backside, especially with the Silence as well. So this is a good pickup. Yeah, I don't think I've seen too many games where Little Nick has played it, at least not so far in the tournament. So fingers crossed we're going to see him ball out of control. But Black and Yellow, with their bands, it's really interesting to see them heavily focus that five position because of course seeing the monkey king you know that there already is a carry on the field if infamous go for it so they try to safely ban out for the viper that way but i just feel like there aren't enough bans for you in that regard every single time and especially in previous drafts where this viper's first phase you always see them select the carries to ban out that matchup so that way you keep that flexibility but they give up on the viper pretty much right off the bat to go for the storm spirit pick and now you have to wonder, is Zero getting sacked a little bit too much here? Because we've also seen Vipers that end up going versus heroes that are a little bit more mobile, that are a little better at punishing your positioning. Oh, you don't really have a game. And now this Viper really doesn't have a game. Yeah, that is a sick Legion pick. Um, yeah, we I actually caught one game of Lil Nick's Earth Spirit here earlier in the tournament. He actually dominated. Uh, he kept black and yellow on that one for quite a while, but they ended up uh, not getting the win. Not necessarily his fault, it was just more of a draft issue, but he plays a beastly Earth Spirit. So excited to watch Lil Nick on that one. Uh, but yeah, this Legion is a really sick counter here. Uh, it's a black and yellow draft that just is going to be that much more difficult for this Viper to, to really play in the game. But it's not something Storm has to be very careful of uh, if he's going to be you know, pushing these side lanes, just this blank duel in from the Legion commander. Um, they go ahead and ban out the Terra Blade. They get rid of the Troll Warlord, some heroes that are just uh pretty uh, pretty obnoxious right now i imagine oh they already got the ursa out from infamous so legion seems fairly protected here yeah and it's scary infamous are so tricky especially when they have last pick because of course you see them ban off the terror blade and you're like hmm why are they doing that it's because alone's played the monkey alone's played the legion commander they could move around these heroes just depending on what your safe laner is going to be here in Yamsun. And I think, of course, the troll ban is really good coverage, but at the same time, I'm getting a little bit concerned. You really need to be careful about falling into these traps. If it ends up being a Monkey King versus the Storm Spirit mid, I don't think Alone's going to be upset with that. If it ends up being the Legion Commander with the Storm, I don't think he's upset either. It no. feels like right now, Black and Yellow don't have that slam pick. They're really going to rely heavily on these spirit rotations coming in that pre-10 minute mark. Because now, you're playing a lineup that is all about killing on the Black and Yellow side, and Infamous are the exact opposite. With their saves, I mean, they're really hard to kill if you don't find that initial burst. And like you said, it's going to be the silence coming in from Nick. We've seen how key that silence is whenever that Earth Spirit has been picked up, whether it's been El Misho, Michael, or Nick himself. But if you don't find that initial burst, Infamous have such a good draft at covering each other especially if these engagements prolong and that's where you're really getting out of that field where suddenly your storm spirit just doesn't have enough mana to kill off these heroes yep yeah absolutely well we got final pick here the morphling oh. removed and they go for the life stealer okay this is one of the only heroes that's like left that is decent enough in lane against the legion commander um you could have gone for more of like a ranged carry something I mean, Luna just is not good here. You need a front line from this from this safe lane. And so Sven, it was pretty much Sven and Lifestyle are the only things that come to mind. Um, infamous, though, I mean, they have plenty of options. Yeah, the, the thing that I'm worried about, I don't think that they can do it, but I'm feeling this, like, Lumiere Dawnbreaker in the back of my mind where, like, then oh. you can't do anything on Storm Spirit in this game, and then yeah. you just kind of lose. But they might not want to go for it just because I don't think it's that great of a matchup into the Nakes. But at the same time, then they've got three healers on their team. Then your damage from Black and Yellow needs to be even tighter in a game that they're already going to struggle to get some of these kills. But at the same time, they could go for something a little bit safer. Doug, was and okay. my, yeah, this was my first thought. It's just a great pick into the Life Stealer. Like, it's never a good matchup for the Life Stealer. And it's a safe lane. Like, you're into the Viper. Poison attack can be removed from, you know, Blade Fury. And that gives, you know, just a little bit more, like, flexibility on how aggressive he can play the lane. He doesn't always have to rely on the Oracle. So this this is a good one. I, I like this pick. It's really safe. And like you said, it is going to be alone on that Monkey King going to that mid lane up against Sammy Storm Spirit. And 
honestly, not too bad for him. He's going to struggle a little bit, but we've seen him, you know, play more difficult matchups in the past. Yeah, and that's where Rune Control, Infamous, they've got two range support. It's going to be really easy for them to make those kind of trips over to the lanes. And I think that's where got to see Nick mirror a every step of the way. If he can get a little bit sneaky, hide himself in a lot of these rotations, then maybe the Earth Spirit can get something done. But that's also where as soon as you leave this Viper alone, unless you are leaving him with a lead, you have Jug. You are going to put the healing word up. You've got the spin, like you said, to get out of those stacks if he even needs to. But the problem being, Jug is just one of the only carries that a lot of these teams are now suddenly starting to pick up that has kill potential on your off laner. And I can very easily imagine Zero getting picked off if he gets a little bit too greedy. And not to mention, you've got Rubik versus Viper in this game. Once this game starts to break away, all of that tower damage is really going to be coming from that early lead coming in from black and yellow. And if they let it get away from them, then suddenly, how do you actually push these towers? This Rubik pick is actually going to be so annoying for finishing off anything early on. Yeah, absolutely. It is being able to do the Nether Toxin is just such a giveaway. Like, there's nothing you can do as the Viper to to prevent the Rubik from stealing that, and it just does so much damage, and it's just so easy to clear the waves with that ability. So, you're right. It's going to become a very difficult scenario here for them to try and uh, get that tower damage, and it's pretty much just going to be the rage of the Life Stealer, and then backing off. But, I mean, you still have duel, though. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's that where, rough. Like, yeah, you, you got questions that Infamous, I mean, they answered them so well. But, of course, draft is draft. Black and yellow, they always pick themselves up in the laning phase. That's where they're meant to win in a lot of their games and a lot of their ideas. I'm just worried if this is just another black and yellow draft where they're playing versus a South American team that just kind of feels like they always have better team fight than you. But that's where those standout performances definitely start to shine with players like Sammy and Yamsun. Speaking of Yamsun, this dude has a Wraith band. Yeah, that's just a Wraith. Cool. Wait, did they, they armor. bumped armor up by one by point yeah. five? Two armor. That's what it is. <laughs> Interesting. I mean... Well, I mean, it's like 2.5 with stats or whatever, because it used to be two armor with the Agi stats, but now it's, you know, slightly more, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it really has started to be picked up, especially in laning situations where you are just going to get heavily traded, and that's yeah, what the Legion Commander what Legion is does. aiming to do. And but the other thing too is Life Slayer needs the attack speed, right? Because it really helps benefit from the feast. Um, you're now that like the attack speed is on Ghoul Frenzy, it's you know not the easiest to uh, you know constantly harass the hero. I I'm a little bit surprised. He's just going to rush the armlet. Some people try to get like an orb of venom or an orb of corrosion early on this hero, but I guess with armlet being as strong as it is, it's not it's, it's not that uh, surprising. Yeah, get that toggle play going. Of course, Helm of Iron will. Then, then the lane stabilizes. Until then, he can definitely eat a lot of damage, and that's where Jube will probably need to uh, help him out just a little bit more, but that's also where Nick... You got to have a really tight Earth Spirit game. If he can get a little bit away, then you'll see him have that space to rotate over towards mid because this is not a stacking four. They are really all in on getting this counterplay going versus their opponents. And at the same time, still need to be so careful because all it takes is just a little bit too far forward from the Viper. And then suddenly you're getting Fortune's End, you're getting Blade Furied, and you just end up eating so much damage. Mid lane is going to be, again, like we talked about, Sammy on the Storm Spirit versus alone on the Monkey King. And it's not a great lane for Monkey, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, alone, pretty incredibly skilled players. So I'm not going to be surprised if he manages to do pretty well. And actually, Sammy in the lane here is taking a lot of harassment as he gets those Jingu stacks. And he's just taunting him with this deny. Yeah, and Monkey King, even though it is a little bit more difficult for him, and especially on, around that level 3 mark where you do have the pull, it's one of the few heroes that's a melee hero that outranges that remnant. So if Alone is just playing around that range, then Sammy needs to be really careful. As soon as that spell gets committed, it's very obvious the play that he's going for, and unfortunately for Sammy, a few uh, ranged creep denies here. It's definitely going to slow him up a little bit, and that's where as soon as you get, I think, one or two levels a little bit faster on the Monkey King, we always see these teams make plays whenever that storm is level 5. Yeah, alone playing some mind games here with these range creeps, just trying to like taunt Sammy into tr into committing for them, but you know doesn't fall for the bait the second time. First time he did get him. He's doing well on CS still here on the Storm Spirit. Actually, wow, that was a very close CS under the tower, but up to 12 so far, so not struggling too much. 
Nah, he's, he's not going to struggle either. He gets to do pretty much whatever he wants, but that's where, again, whether or not the infamous supports can rotate for those runes, because the monkey doesn't care. But bottom, Wraith fan's working out. It is, know? absolutely. Five plus two, that's a lot of armor. That's seven. Yeah, if I uh, do the math real quick, I'm going to carry the one, and it is, in fact, seven. Yeah, you're right. But uh, really, in this lane, it is more annoying for Yamsun just because you do have that Fade Bolt reducing your base damage. You see him actually sick to nigh there against Sacred, but whenever Sacred is trying a little bit harder for those CS, he does have the extreme advantage. You have a, about 15 or 20 damage on top of the Life Stealer, and that's where I think both these supports going for pulls. Unfortunately, Michael is just a little bit ahead of the exchange here. Even right clicks the Centaur to make sure that that aggro does keep, but. Yamsun is going to struggle to walk up to some of these creep oh, nice opportunities. Grip. Yeah, nice brain tap. brain tap. Yeah. Fiend's grip at three minutes. What? I mean, that would just be. Jubei God. I mean, the rework. It's yeah. coming. We'll see. <laughs> this is the update we all need. Not the morphling model. <laughs> the Fiend's grip level three. Oh my goodness. Yamsun's just getting regen pumped into him. Yeah, I mean, he didn't buy any regen in this lane. Just this Wraith Band right into the Quelling Blade, and he's going to send this Helma Iron Will here in just about 10 gold. So Jubei is his personal uh, medical assistant for the time being. And they're doing a good job here on Infamous. As soon as that pull happens, they do want to play a little bit under your tower. We've seen a lot of carries actually get punished whenever there is that creep surplus with the Legion Commander. But unfortunately, that's where heroes like the Rubik just doesn't have enough damage naturally to get too aggressive, but that's also Michael rotating towards the runes here, and unfortunately, Sammy got bullied off of the top one, so without this, this is uh, a little bit no annoying for him to deal with. He's actually in a lot Ooh. of trouble if Michael's able to get around the backside, and he got the next oh. slow. That is it. First blood goes the way of Rubik. The two points. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, and just no rotation. And oh, Nick, the oh. telekinesis! What a sick play by Michael. Great hold on that one. He's got the urn finish, but Bolt. zero charges. And Fade Bolt coming off cooldown. Michael's about oh. to grab himself a double kill, baby. Nah, he's going to give it on over to Alone. He's like, all right, I took first blood. You get the next one. Storm TPing in. I mean, okay. He's but, fine, but... Yeah. Whew. I mean, he's a, I mean, that's almost a level six Monkey King now after those two kills. He is level six. Yeah, and now, Sammy, you don't want to be forced to rotate over. Of course, unlike a lot of Storm Spirits, he's not getting a small camp locked up. That's a little bit of a benefit here. But, I mean, look at alone. He knows the advantage. And Sammy's getting none of these creeps. Oh, this is just brutal now. This is just him playing with such a lead. And, unfortunately, Sammy, what do you do here? You're playing versus a Boots, Orb of Venom, Monkey King, who's just not going to give you any of these last hits. Good trading at the oh, very least. Oh, nice mischief, mischief though. And they're going to roll in. Nick comes in, gets the slow. This is a huge oh, kill miss. if he can find it. And alone, he's getting close. The high oh. ground miss. You're freaking kidding me. He's going to turn it around, gets the oh, Jingu no. stacks, and Nick goes down potentially. Can he jump forward? He plants a tree. This guy's so good. That's just insane. And then he eats and it. And then he eats I mean. it. Oh, my God. He's like, you got to get the efficiency with that tango. And I mean, that was sketchy for alone because he missed his boundless onto Sammy Boy. So he had to get the sacks from the Earth Spirit. But then it's just A in with the salve. I mean, they're doing such a good job of covering and really shutting down the storm. At the very least, Nick almost retroactively gets to save Sammy's lane a little bit here. Gets that bottle refill, gets to wait a little bit longer. But this would be a good kill. Yeah, if they can bring down Excel, it'd be really nice. He is protected by... Well, the Forge is in for a moment, but still ends up falling. And with the rotation in from Michael, this haste rune helping secure one kill and potentially another as Jubei just blocked up. I imagine, yeah, he's going to toggle that Nightmare on over. Nice usage there, but alone oh, continuing dude. the pounce, dude. He is just owning here with this mischief. Just dodging that attack so he can go right up onto the tree. This and guy what, plays Monkey King me? or something, maybe. Who knows? Might just be his first oh, game. Oh, no. He's got three stacks of Jingu. He could try and turn this around, but... Instead, he doesn't. Zero's the one jumping in. He makes a it tree out. Cut. Oh, zero. And I mean, you just ruined your offlane now. It, the unfortunate thing about that rotation coming in from the Viper, who was honestly stabilizing his lane whenever that Oracle did have to leave at first, just means that now you're going to come back to lane versus, what, a level six jug? And unfortunately, that's your opportunity to find the kill into the Viper that I think Infamous have been looking for. And knowing that the viper tp'd mid now they bring the rubik top and if yep. zero's not extremely careful on this wave 
He just dies. They're going to go ahead and start channeling oh, no. the Fortune Zen, keeping him in place. Lumiere can close the gap, and with a Telekinesis here as Dude. well. Zero That's is dead. So good. The, the, That's so ridiculously good. They're just so they're just they're just playing them like a fiddle, man. They they know exactly where black and yellow are gonna be at all times. It's also just incredible outplays by alone in the mid lane. Like not not like one v one against Sammy. I mean like one v three. He is just outplaying them. He I mean, is having a great start insane. to the game. And of course, these are plays that you would assume you only get to make once you have that echo saber. And what you okay? Jubei, he gets the ward at the very least, but you don't have boots. Are you just going to get chased down now? It would be a sad way to go down on Jubei, but yeah, I don't think there's he's getting Michael. out. Telekinesis there is going to catch him. Is alone okay. just messing with all? Oh, they're setting up a dual oh, sacred. Beautiful. Walked all the way over for this. He just got level six. Oh, I mean, man. And it's not a crazy lead, right? But it, all of these plays are just working out in just such fantastic fashion for Infamous. I mean... It's yeah, the XP, Samson. right? That like you feel a lot yeah. more right now than the gold. Yeah, it just feels like, especially the supports, and it's something that's so important for a team like Infamous. Whenever Michael and A have a good game, they're just the dynamic duo. They just have so much more damage to play with, and it just feels like they're getting what they want. At the very least, Yamsun, his build did work out. He's got the armlet already, meaning that really Sacred can't ever force him out at this point. But then top, they just keep playing on Zero, who has just been abandoned and. Unfortunately, he doesn't really have a good way back into this game. It's just the punish. That first punish, as soon as he had to make that rotation over mid, it's one of those heroes where suddenly you can't ever show up back to your lane. And what, he was 31 and 18, blast it denies? I mean, he was fine versus the Jug, but everything really just starts to fall apart, and that's where we're back to this game where the spirits need to make up the difference. And Sammy, unfortunately, doesn't have this vision, otherwise he might try for something on to A, but... They've got vision of him, though. Cool. Ooh, yeah. They're going to know about this ward soon, I imagine. It is giving them too much info, but no one has a sentry. Oh, man. Well, and look at Alone's build, abandoned. too. He's on his way to an Orchid. And actually, one of my like favorite items to pick up from the mid lane on heroes, specifically that don't usually build it all that often, I think it can be really impactful. The ones that come to mind for me are always like the Monkey King and the Kunkka. I think these are like two heroes that like really benefit from having that uh additional silence and it pairs really well with their burst damage so this is gonna do wonders this game against heroes like the life stealer and the storm spirit neither of them that want to build themselves a dispel yeah and i mean it's in that same vein as like razors as well getting items like the yule scepter where suddenly you're just like oh i can't play dota and uh oh they're making plays on these runes and nick okay Kick finds back. the Oracle, gets the kickback. Sammy's not too far, but they don't really see the rest of the team. Now rotating on over is oh, going to no. be alone. He's just ready to go. Finds him on the backside, and he's going to be able to chase down Jubei here with Boundless Strike. Up on the high ground, Sammy chasing after the Oracle, but a nice boulder in from Michael is going to hold him down. And Sammy, he needs to leave. Lumiere still got the Omni to work with. Dude, he sent that healing ward in from a while away. Oh, does he hit the jump? Oh, the fortune's end. If nice that's connected... Try. That would have been so tight from Infamous, but Lumiere makes the rotation, and this is another big benefit of the Jug. Look at when he makes the rotation. It's on the cart, he has the pressure on the mid tower, and Nick is just getting chased around. He still has a lot of stones to play with, but this is just so tight. And now, what happens to your mid tier one tower? It's not like the Viper's gonna TP here to They're do anything. They're looking for Viper anyway, top the lane, they've up. got the duel. He's gonna go oh. ahead and drop the Viper Strike. He actually needs the oh, mana. No mana. He gets put to sleep okay. by the Bane, but it's still not enough. Sacred gets the kill. Lift? I don't know if they go for it still, but it might just I work. Mean, they can. Yeah. He's, he's so strong on Sacred right now, right? Bound the strike just for safe measures, but Sacred, when he's got that armlet active, this dude's got almost 200 damage. He's got over 200 damage. Yeah, and it's where the snowball, it just you felt even more powerful from Infamous. And, and Michael is just everywhere he needs to be, especially to counteract every single sleep. You feel like Jubei is going to help his teammate out, and suddenly it just ends up not mattering. Lumiere, solo kill. Okay, Sammy. Oh, wow. Okay, that's really nice. Well done by Sammy. He was too busy think... tipping the, the life stealer to, to watch his uh, own hero, I think. Yeah, and I think Yamsun did end up leaving that lane, but again, A... This is a nice pick here. Nice this silence is good. from Nick. Vortex oh, going to have to come through, and it does. Nice pick off. All right, they'll grab the two kills. Sammy's current, like suddenly up to level 10, but with no mana to work with and no uh, 
TP. Oh, they're actually not going to punish it. The Rubik went after the, the uh, Earth Spirit, so. All right. I will say Yamsun's still at the top of the net worth. It is a 3k gold lead overall for the side of Infamous, mostly just because of how much this Viper has struggled these last few minutes. But they are, uh, you know, they're actually doing okay as far as the Life Stealer and the Storm Spirit goes. Yeah, and that's where Sammy just finished his Orchid. Not a bad Orchid timing at all. 12 minutes into the game, it's still going to feel very impactful, and that's where he does need to pick and choose his targets. He really needs to wait for a while before he finds his initiation, just because we have so many inherent dispels on the infamous side, but I think that's also where Black and Yellow might need to stall out a little bit, because unless you're finding a play with the Earth Spirit, having that Viper in the offlane, you don't have that easy button where you just suddenly walk across the map with your level 6 and stuff happens. I think they need to maybe place a little bit more vision down on the map before they can ever get too aggressive because they also have grip. I mean, Jubei, he always wants to smoke around this moment where he gets that tome delivered and he gets to actually make plays, but unfortunately, that's where Infamous are still the aggressors here. Yeah, you've got the Aether Lines picked up on Michael, and he's actually sitting on a Viper Strike, and Sacred just wants to keep getting this dual damage stacked up. Running into Yamsun is best case scenario, but there is Jubei on the backside. The Orchid comes out, but he misses oh. the Boundless Strike. In comes Legion. The duel does come through, but he got the Infest off in time. Bane goes down, but doesn't give the dual damage, and now Zero, the one caught out as well. So it's going to be two quick kills there for Infamous Life, so they're managing to survive. Could have been yeah, worse, I... you know, Copium, but still a fantastic play there from Infamous, getting, uh, continuing to stay active, rather. Yeah, it, it feels like Black and Yellow, they're looking for the plays because they know that they can make them, but everything is in the dark, and oh, what a, oh, the Boundless Strike yeah. on that Earth Spirit. That was sick. Okay, run out of damage, um, He's slashing on the backside, Jubei, he's gonna put himself to sleep, try and dodge out some of the damage. He's got the Fiend's Grip, he's right onto the Jug, stolen by Michael, but the Orchid comes oh, in from Sammy, perfect timing, they take down the Jug, they get the Rubik as well. Okay, oh my goodness. a big turnaround, and that Orchid reveal paying dividends. And that's just awesome from Sammy. That is the perfect reveal. I think they didn't know about it top because the storm just didn't end up showing his face, but that's exactly what you want. That's just perfect coverage. And Michael, he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He needs to be the one to actually break that grip. But Infamous, they definitely overextend there. They just ran out of damage and the hard turn. Unfortunately, that wasn't with your Viper involved. Zero's still looking for his way into this game, but those little misplays, they definitely even it out. And it's for Yamsun, who just never skipped a beat while farming. He's pulling ahead of everyone. Yeah, he really is. He is incredibly farmed here on the Life Stealer, especially after that in that engagement on his way to the Basher, it seems, before finishing up the S and Y. But, I mean, Sammy just also takes second place on the net worth chart. It's now suddenly looking really good for Black and Yellow. Yeah, and more importantly, with those kills and now the little bit of fear and in Infamous, you have the space to play some of this vision that I think you've been looking for the entire game. They just haven't had the opportunity because they're so afraid of this Monkey King finding those opportunities onto themselves. And Jubei does have to be very careful in the mid lane here. Of course, this mid tower already took a lot of damage five minutes ago when Lumiere made his own rotation, but we'll have to see. I mean, Earth Spirit is one of the better heroes versus the Monkey King. If you can find that pole, you will get him out of that tree line. But at the same time, this is the wave clear from the Viper. You just need to be so careful because Michael is also looking for that spell constantly. It is only level one Nether Toxin, so it's yeah not the best. But I think part of that is also he doesn't want to give it to Rubik like, you're t like we've talked about. Man, look at this, though. They're just giving absolutely nothing. Michael just the sole taker of the tower, and it's gone. You're ahead of the exchange zone on Infamous, but I think it's really good from Black and Yellow to not give them that play. Zero knows if he walks down from that high ground, he is just dead. He just gets cleaned up, but look at now the top lane. This is a good smoke from, again, Infamous are just so aware of where their opponents are playing at all times. If they clip anyone here, especially Sammy, I think this is the blink duel, so he doesn't have that rage TP. And Nick, he scouts okay. him, but he, Orchid does come through. They don't see exactly where he goes. Boundless Strike is available, but Nick, it's going to get interrupted. They're on the roll. Sacred trying to get in range for the duel, and he makes it. So Infamous will be able to clean up one kill there. Onto the forward position. Sacred grabbing himself 10 more damage. So a nice hunt comes through. Yeah, but 
At the same time on Infamous, you need to be a little bit careful. You don't want to be too heavy-handed in these rotations. They wanted Yamsen, ideally, because when they start splitting the map, that's something that Black and Yellow, even in a lot of the games where they have been losing, are so good at filling the space. Once their opponents show in a really big area of the map, that's when immediately both Zero, Sammy, and Yamsen always find the farm onto the creep waves. Unfortunately, sometimes you do get picked off as Sammy Boy uh, has in a lot of his games, especially on the Void Spirit. But if you get a few more of these items, then you're still maintaining that net worth lead ahead of everyone on Infamous's side, except for Zero. Yeah, it really is Zero that's struggling. I mean, he's basically a support at this point, just going to be deep pushing with Nether Talks, and he's on his way to his BKB. You know, and Viper will be able to do quite a bit here as the game goes on, just because that hero like having nether toxin viper strike and stuff like that is pretty pretty solid but you're not going to feel the impact of him anywhere near as much as the legion commander and okay they're pinging lumiere if they see him but that's not your target you don't really want to go for the burst on him especially seeing that mantis style that's where really black and yellow they need to look for either the rubik or the oracle those are the easiest ones to find and pick off but okay orchid did an illusion but that's a lot of mana, Sammy, you had to use there. The jump for the oh, life stealer instead. The duel comes out. He is silenced, but can they actually keep the life stealer alive? Able to push him out. He pops the rage, turning around onto the monkey king. Gets saved by the false promise for a moment. But it's not going to be enough. Is the fight just falling apart here for the side of infamous monkey king? Able to leap away. Oh, alone. Oh, did he? Oh, nice. He's being chased. Gets the silence off. On the strike comes through as well, but you've lost Michael in the mid lane and Viper unable to cancel the TP. They get three kills once again. The fight's going their way over and over. Yeah, and it's that little roll reversal where what a sick item choice from Sammy. Of course, you never want to be forced to go with this Yule Scepter on the Storm Spirit, but at the same time, it broke up that dual play so heavily. He didn't get the disconnect on the LC himself, but you put the monkey into the air. It was a really short Fiend's Grip channel from Jubei as well, but I think that's where Infamous weren't respecting their opponents a little bit there. I think maybe if Lumiere is in a better position to show up to the fight, you have that healing ward, you have that prolonged engagement happen, but instead, they just eat a little bit too much damage, and Yamsun, there's no way to get him off you if that duel's committed on someone else, and he just gets to walk immediately through the fight. Whoa. Sammy, though, yeah, Saker just got the solo kill. You gotta be careful. You can't afford to show him those side lanes. 720 gold. That's where the LC really starts to snowball out of control. Yeah, the, I mean, we talked about this earlier, the blink duel being such an issue for the Storm Spirit, and... That is that is a huge amount of golden experience. I mean, eighteen hundred experience going the way of the Legion Commander there. That's that's yeah. over. That's like a level and a half. Yeah, and it really feels like that's where Sammy he likes to play this split style. He likes to get as much farm as he can out of the map, where his opponents are definitely needing to stay closer to each other. But don't let it happen again honestly because at the same time just praising his yule's choice when he's not the target it's going to be really difficult for sacred to finish off these duel wins at least for the time being until he gets either the bkb or the ag shard but okay i think there's a bomb gonna coming be an in the infest bomb bottom potentially yeah sammy gonna show clear the wave there it is okay. Oh, they're going to smoke under a ward. Yikes. Alone's here. Oh, hits no. him with a boundless strike. There comes the duel right away. Can they save him, though, is the question. They need to try, but no. Sammy goes down. False promise keeping the Legion in this, but they've lost the Monkey King, and it's Yamsun that you got to be worried about now. He's just on top of Sacred. Great roll in from the Earth Spirit, trying to just keep his attention on the Oracle. Sacred gets bashed, goes down. The rest of the heroes going to TP out. Yes, you get the duel victory, but it's cost you both your mid and your off lane. Yeah, I think again, it's really greedy for Infamous, and maybe they didn't know about the Storm Spirit's HP pool being just a little bit massive there, still from the Infest. But even though you get the kill on the Storm Spirit, you are still playing into this Nakes, a Nakes that really you are not able to deal with right now i think they're really lacking a lot of that damage and in a very similar situation lumiere who's supposed to be your difference maker here doesn't have that damage they get the yet. fiends grip. butterfly oh no they way have it. they've got lumiere oh. he goes down michael no chance of making it there what a sick play by nick i mean that's perfect and is yamson really strong enough to do the throw she's gonna go Absolutely. for it and he's got sny now okay. 
Well, this is just the complete turnaround. And I mean, Sammy Boy is just now getting out onto the map, but after that pick, now you have this siege engine coming in from your nakes that suddenly Infamous aren't able to solve their problem. They really are running out of damage. And of course, praising the Monkey King's Orchid uh, maybe six or seven minutes ago when he had it, it felt incredibly good for him. But now not having those traditional items just means that he's not actually able to stand in a lot of these fights, especially when black and yellow bring the numbers. And unfortunately, it just means that with this Aegis, they just get to do whatever they want. Does Sammy Boy take it? I don't think, know. I, I think, think you put it on Sammy. Dying, yeah, I think you put it on Sammy. Yeah. Because he's just, he can't afford to just get dueled and die to for a third time in a row. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Yamsen's dying either. It just feels like none of the damage coming from Infamous is fast enough at this point. But now Sammy has this huge buffer. He just gets to farm for the next four minutes if he wants to go for it. Or, unfortunately, he doesn't want to give it away early. I think he wants to use this Aegis to build himself up, go for some safe plays, exchange off these tier two towers. But then you're ending up in this pretty advantageous mid game where suddenly your Storm, who has been getting picked off, is third in net worth. He's, He's right up still there with there. every single other core. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of it is infamous. Like stopped. They were they were trying so hard to push the tempo of the game and show and slow down Sammy on the Storm Spirit as well as as the Viper. They kind of just weren't farming on this Monkey King as much as he needed to be, and you can see it reflected in the net worth. I mean, he is pretty far down there, near next to the Viper, and he doesn't have his BKB. And until he has that, he can't really fight into the side of Black and Yellow. And even once he does, Yamsun, he's still just gonna run you over, right? Yeah, and we've seen it already in the two fights where Alone is channeling out his Wukong's command. He's sitting in it. He's feeling confident. He just gets shredded. They're going to push high ground. way too much, and okay, they can definitely do this, can, especially right? as a forcing move. They already got the glyph, so they exchanged the glyphs to get ahead of the exchange, but unfortunately, that's where Lumiere is in no position to split, and do they actually look for this duel? I mean, they I mean, can try, but you've okay. got help. It's not that far away. They've got the Spash. He gets saved. He might actually end up winning. No, the sa the status Resistance actually saving him. Sacred going to be saved by the Oracle. He jumps in on Sammy. He's going to be able to get out as he falls incredibly low. But Nick infested up. Fiend's Grip instantly purged. The Wukong's command comes through from below. They melt the backside of Black and Yellow. Able to get out on Little Nick. And Sammy will be able to do the same. The Infest comes through. Alone, you've come too far forward. Lifestealer just bashes him down. Sammy now onto the Rubik. Saved by the the attack but it's not gonna matter they're going one to one the omni slash doesn't even matter michael oh. hiding in the trees but they see him they're gonna find you eventually oh man that was such a good way for actually black and yellow to start that fight but then they go a little bit too far they don't have eyes onto the monkey king unfortunately both jubei and zero get baited into following their teammates they die just way too far up and then Infamous do the exact same thing. They don't respect their opponent's Aegis. They don't respect anything. But no, Sammy. He's done it again. This He's is actually such a sick play by Sacred twice. Because this time he knows as soon as that fight's over, someone's going to head bottom to TP. And Sacred's like... Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be ready to. I'll be ready to duel whoever it is, as long as it's not Life Stealer. I can get the duel victory, and it just happens to be the Storm Spirit once again. Yeah, and, and he now queues up the changes. Lincoln Sphere. He got a Kaya Sanj, yeah. which gives him the status resistance. You know that was super helpful, but he does need a Lincoln's this game. Sacred is becoming too pro too problematic. Yeah, and he really is just the strongest hero on Infamous's side for them to actually start these engagements and. Either you need Jubei behind you, or you need a Lincoln's, or you can't show until Sacred shows. Sacred's done such a good job of hiding his presence, and at the same time, so has Alone. They've both been just yeah. doing a really good job of not letting their opponents know where they are, where we still have this feeling that Infamous know exactly where their opponents are playing at almost all times. At the very least, in that previous engagement, Wimir didn't lose his life, so he's still able to build himself up, and we are getting to that point in the Juggernaut's build where you get that butterfly, and suddenly it's a lot more difficult for Yamsun to make any of his damage actually stick, but oh my goodness, he's so farmed. But mid lane... He goes in oh. mid, he's gonna find Michael, and they actually see the uh, Oracle on the top side of the map. Does get the D ward, though, so I think he should be safe here. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, look like they're going to go for the chase. They're just going to work on the tier 2 here instead. Yamsun tickling down that tower. Meanwhile, bottom lane alone doing a good job at playing it safe here on this tier 3. Does not want to overcommit as heroes are missing from the map. Obviously, mainly being Jubei. We could just catch him with that Fiend's Grip. And it looks like Oracle will finally leave. But mid and top.
Now exposed, technically, as the Tier 2 towers have been cleaned out. Yeah, this game and... is so on Yamsun, right? Yeah, everything is about his hero. And, of course, once he has a Scotty, I mean, he has just so much more farm than Lumiere. I'm just really caught off guard. Lumiere is so much further behind. And, of course, Butterfly is on deck. He's going to have in just a few hundred more. Blink duel. They find Jubei. Okay. They're going to but... try and turn around here and maybe keep alive. The Infested oh. does your kill. Oh my god, the saves from Yams on the Oracle. Orchid it up. They even get the Fiends Griff onto alone. Three heroes dead. They've got buyback on one, but Michael, no chance in hell you're getting out of this one. Well, nice Yule's dodge for the moment. Michael, some fancy footwork, but now a fourth to fall. Oh my wow. god, the infest heal. 1,200. It doubled his, his effective HP, basically. Yamson just saves the fight. You get the brain sap immediately afterwards. You channel out that fiend script, and Sammy, for the second time in very sick fashion, has that cover with the orchid. And unfortunately, this is just your racks. There is nothing you can do about it. If you're infamous, maybe you fight over that top set, but they are just doing a little bit too much here. They traversed immediately into Black and Yellow's territory. Until then, infamous were doing such a good job of actually setting up in that bottom lane, but then they throw it all away to go for that one kill and. That was just a duel you're going to heavily regret on Sacred. And okay, Yamsun, so he's close half too. HP, but you know, look at him. He's got he the Aya Scotty. Scotty. Yeah. has a Paladin Sword, too. I mean, there's oh. just no good way to kill this Lifestealer. So he bought out that Scotty after that fight happened and now has yeah. 1,200 gold to work with. So one thing I'm wondering, there's, there's no way this interaction works, right? It is a health bonus on Infest, right? You don't get additional healing from a Paladin Sword on the Infest heal, right? No, no, right? It's okay, I was like, like it's not it. technically it's a heal, so it should be flat health gain. But in the mid lane, we're gonna see the fight. Sammy gets the science off on the Rubik. Lumiere spinning away, but they've lost the Legion Commander. Oracle, he's got the false promise, hasn't used it quite yet. Protected for the moment by a Glimmer Cape, but still ran down Sammy out of mana, giving the vision they need. They get a third. Are black and yellow actually taking a game off of Infamous? That's what it looks like, and Yamson, I mean, yet again, you take 800 damage on the Storm Spirit, you immediately infest him, you get that 5 HP bonus, and now suddenly, at the very least on Infamous, you do have Glyph for this top tower. They're going back I don't mid, think they the Fiend's grip, Jubei's caught Juggernaut, he goes down, oh my god, Jubei, his time opening up the tome, reading Infamous like a book. Oh my goodness, this life stealer, and I mean, he cut the wave. He did get those creepers yeah, down, so this backdoor is back, and I actually don't think he has enough damage. It's going down slowly, very slowly. They will get the melee barracks. Yeah, they're going to get it here. Yeah, they got it. Zero even gets a little bit closer, so that bat isn't affecting him in the slightest, but man, what a reversal. And now, with the fight going to the redirect around the Roche pit, of course, Infamous have some fantastic they have a ward. wards. They see a lone like, top. Oh. He's got to okay. be so careful here, Jubei just waiting with a nightmare but he's now playing under his own ward vision so he should be safe and they do know where their opponents are playing but i feel like we need not just an item on lumiere we need an item and then an item in half almost because it just feels like the damage is gone and sacred Go for the wrap around here potentially sammy he's infested looking for sacred they jump on him right away yams i'm starting the aggression oracle he gets the false promise off just barely and now the duel onto the storm spirit i don't know He's somehow making it work. No, Jubei puts him to sleep, able to save this Storm Spirit once again. And Yamsun just dumping so much damage in these fights. And Little Nick, again, he saw Rubik on this top war. Doesn't end up connecting right away, but they know he's still he in here. here. Jumps. Oh, no. Oh, oh he Nick? has the Yules. Nick. <laughs> I mean, you just didn't see him. It's fine. You just didn't see him. Just didn't, just didn't see him. Yeah. yeah. Just didn't see him. There's no ward or anything. He didn't, he didn't see him. I'm but, sure it's, it's fine. Yeah. It, it's fine. You would have loved it, but you uh, you won't cry about not getting it. But at the same time, Juve you, you has boots of travel. I mean, everything is really just coming together for black and yellow, of course. Game's far from over. They still do have to kill their opponents. Ancient, there still is this bottom tower that has really been a thorn in their side for quite a while here, but I think it's a full Abyssal Blade now on Yamsun coming on the Courier, so they still need to be so careful. And Lumiere, they're smoking on his Butterfly, a Butterfly that's been so delayed, and Nick, oh, he's playing with alone. <laughs> he's trying to cut Ooh. those trees. 
Hey, just running. rolls in. He doesn't care. He's got vision from Yamsun and Sammy jumps back side. He almost gets dueled there. Alone able to get out. Now Sammy Lincoln's gonna keep him alive for now. Nick continuing the chase with the help of Yamsun. Omni Slash comes through. He's gonna go ahead and infest up onto Sammy, and now your Juggernaut's in a terrible spot. The Abyssal there to finish him off, and you've already lost the Oracle. Zero made quick work of him. Sacred now on the run. Sammy, you got no mana, but he's here for moral support. The GG comes out. Black and yellow, despite all odds, have taken a game off of Infamous. And I mean, we were there yesterday. We saw how good Infamous were looking, and versus D2 Hustlers. I mean, a team who put black and yellow in the dirt. I, this is just a wild turn of events. Yamsun, man. Yamsun. The, the hero pick just worked way too well. That lifestealer just ended up almost saving everyone in that mid game. And Infamous, I think, putting a lot of their efforts away from that Nakes really ended up biting them. I think they were playing such a tight game until that point. Sammy Boy never stopped farming. Of course, he kept on finding the farm. He was never in a bad spot when it came to his net worth, but... I think a few too many engagements where Lumiere wasn't able to connect with the rest of his teammates, both the Monkey King and the LC, maybe just a little bit too mobile and a little bit too far away. And then we end up in this situation where the kill lineup has the damage. Infamous is the one that don't have that very easy way to get these hero kills. They're all about healing. They're all about surviving. And unfortunately, the game just snowballs out of control. And I think alone specifically, his build, it was cool. It was great. It's fantastic when you're 8-1, and one, but you get what? I think a few too many deaths, you look for that BKB and suddenly you have BKB and Orchid on Monkey King. There's no Scotty, there's no Echo Saber. You just lost control of the game and unfortunately everything kind of snowballs there where the Monkey King just feels like he does nothing after a certain point. Yeah, it, it did. And the thing that was so interesting is like they did really well in the top lane here on Lumiere, like shutting down zero, but you're you're hundred percent right. Like he never really got involved. He finished the game one, five, and three. Being involved in four total kills in this game is is not what you really want to see out of your carry. And it's not like a, you know, a knock at him, you know, and not and, and not and not playing correctly. It's just infamous. Like they they were trying to get so active early and while like the jug farmed, and you just don't actually have the power spike to deal with, with Yamsun without your juggernaut. You just yeah, don't have the damage. That's also where, of course, heroes like the Leshrac, where unfortunately, as good of a hero as this Juggernaut pairs up with the Oracle, unfortunately for the rest of your lineup, how does that get you onto buildings? How does that get your opponents to actually look you in the eye and give you one of those genuine team fights? It just got to a tipping point where Black and Yellow suddenly have this unkillable draft and so many quick and easy plays for Infamous in those first 15 minutes, it just it falls apart so quickly for them. Yeah, this was such a sick game. Super excited to see how game number two goes because this was definitely, I would say, an, a surprising turn of events for a lot of people. I, I think a lot of like most people, even all the fans of Juba, had kind of written them off for this series, being that Infamous has looked so dang good in this tournament. But you know, Black and Yellow, they stepped up their game today and very much deserved it. So we're gonna go to a short break, everyone. Stay tuned for more here on the BTS Pro Series season number nine. We are just getting started. It is a full day of Dota ahead. We got game two of Black and Yellow for Infamous coming up next. We'll see you then.